<clears throat> hey, Farmer's Corner. Today is the 18th of November. We're still in the COVID. It's been a very funny year in 2028. I haven't done a video in the longest time. A friend of mine was complaining. We're like, Mitchell, come on. We subscribe to your page. We we subscribe. We like we like and subscribe. We follow your page. But you're no more giving us content. And we want content. Because I've been busy. As most of you would know that I have been... Uh, since May of this year, or since March, let me put it this way, or since May, I haven't been actively farming in the field of agriculture. I have withdrawn from that, uh, probably looking to restart somewhere uh, end of this year, beginning 2021. Fingers crossed, God willing. So now, yeah, now I, I thought, what, what, what topic would I talk about? Uh, what really is a burning issue in agriculture right now? There's a lot of things that are burning, but which one is the most important? And then one friend of mine asked me, Mitchell, why is it that um, with white farming families, like with white uh, farms, do you find that a farm has passed from generation to generation and is still being very productive and is still kept in the hands of the family? It hasn't changed ownership. Like, for example, if a farm is bought by uh, the Mitchell family, it's, it stays in the hands of the, of the Mitchells and doesn't go to the hands of the, of, 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 of the Stephans, you know, something like that. So I said, look, I, I, I sat down, I did some research, I spoke to some uh, white farmers, of course, I don't want to make it a racial issue, but I spoke to some of them and they gave me the insight. One gentleman, a senior man who I know, has a very beautiful farm up in the Tumep area. I would not mention their names. On that farm, he does uh, two forms of farming. He does uh, animal husbandry, which is now your uh, breeding and, and rearing of cattle, of I mean of livestock, sorry, not cattle per se, but livestock. And then he also does horticulture, which is now the planting of fresh fruits and uh, fresh vegetables. And when I asked him, now, what is the key, man? The fact that your father has kept this farm in your family or your grand... Your, you, like he said, no. He was like, no, my, my, my grandfather was the first owner of this farm. And then after my grandfather, my grandfather... Uh, my father inherited it from my grandfather. And then my father now... And then, my, and then his father passed it on to him. And now he works with his sons. And then I asked him, okay. Now, how have you been able to keep it like that? And how are you keeping your sons motivated? He said, look, Mitchell... What my dad did when um, me and my me and my younger brother, my elder brother, came of age when we were still young young lads, he gave us both equal opportunities on those farms, and then um, it came apparent that my elder brother wasn't interested in agriculture, and then my dad gave him our logistics company, and I run the farm. But then, how he does it with his sons? He's like with my sons. I have two sons, and they both have an interest in agriculture. One is a, a wizard when it comes to to, to, to uh, animal husbandry. The other one is very good at horticulture. So I run my farm similar way as you'd run a business. You know, the white collar business where you have to wear a tie and go to work. He runs it that way. He, as the father, is the CEO of the company, which means he's the head of the company. And his sons are the managing directors of different departments of the company. How they run this farm is each one is given uh, creative, I mean, creative responsibility, like decision-making powers. They all have decision-making powers and nobody nobody gets involved in the other, what the other one is doing. They do help assist each other when, and I mean, they, do, they don't get involved in what the other one is doing, but they do assist each other as a family because on the end of the day, you are, you are running an enterprise. They share decision-making powers. They share profits amongst themselves very equally. So it's not a situation of whereby the father is like, no, this is my farm. So whatever I'm making for me, I'm keeping to myself. He's like, no. When we make profits from from our horticulture business and we make profits from our uh, from our livestock rearing business, we share profits. We share profits amongst I, I as the CEO pay my MDs, and then from then I also pay the employees on the farm. And every end of the year, every end of the year, like every end of uh, every end of the year in December or in November, whichever year, they sit down and they have an annual AG meeting and. They have silent partners who are who is the uncle, the father's uh, elder brother. He's not involved in agriculture, but he comes he comes to the ages and he also has decision making powers. So decisions in the on their farm is is, is 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 not just decisions that you would make as an individual. For example, if one of the sons say, "Okay, we are gonna stop breeding," for example, Bosmara cattle because of the size and they graze a lot. We need to breed probably smaller uh, indigenous cattle like the Nguni cattle. And then at the end of the year, at the annual AG meeting they have as a family, he has to defend the reason why he wants to stop breeding. He wants to stop the Bosmara breeding and introduce Guni cattle. So it's the same thing also for the other brother who's doing horticulture. He has to explain probably why he wants to stop planting corn and probably wants to start planting white maize. So 
after he, 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 after he gives a presentation why he feels this is the best business decision for, for them, they vote. They vote on it. Each person has one vote, and it's no, it's majority rule type of of of, of type of rule uh, a business uh, a business a business um, uh, a business mode. And the father, on the end of the being the CEO, has most the largest stake in in decision making of what goes on. But that's how he runs his business. And he said, "Look, this is how this is how my father, this is how my grandfather, uh, to my father was able to keep the business, and how my father, to me, is able to keep the business still in the family hands." And Hopefully me, with my two sons, both of them would keep the family business in their hands and keep this farm in the family hands and not lose it or not be tempted to sell it. And not just that, they also have shares. They also have shares. They, 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 they all have equal shares within the company. The two brothers have equal shares. The uncle also has shares. And the father has the lion's share because he's CEO of the company. So they run it that way. And then I sat down and I said, now, that's nice. And this explains why you would see on most of this... Uh, um, white people farms, you would see the they would have their, their, you can call it coat of arms, and then it would say there how long the farm has been in the family business or the family business has been running for how many years. Then you come now to our fellows, us black people, and you ask ourselves, why is that not the case? And I also sat down and looked at also my situation. I looked at many black people's situation. A lot of uh, young black people who I associate with were also in the field of agriculture and what their frustrations are when it comes to family farms. The first thing most of them would say is, look, Mitchell, on the family farm, or not even the family farm, let's say on the farm, which is most of the time our father's farms, they make all the decisions on this farm. Whether it's good or bad decisions, they make it. We, on the end of the day, they make it. We, on the end of the day, as the children or the sons who are the ones who are running these farms for them, don't have any say in what is being done. How you just hear, for example, our dad just says, no, we are going to stop farming guni cattle. We are going into Brahman production. He will not even sit down and ask you who's the probably the boots on the ground, who knows the inside and understands what's going on in the farm and why it might be not viable to breed Brahman cattle there, why it's viable to maybe breed guni cattle. He will not ask you that question. And when you object to that, he would most of the time, he or she, mom or dad, would most of the time tell you and remind you that this is not your farm. This is his farm. He makes, he makes the decisions. If you want a farm, go buy your own. And this is why you see with a lot of uh, black successful farming families, you would find that the farmer, for, the, for example, the father and mother have a farm in Fontaine, and the son has his own farm probably in Ochivarongo, far away from his parents. Because we get frustrated. You know, as black people, as the children, we are most of the time the people who are on the ground who associate with our farm workers, who speak to them and who see the conditions on the farm. And most of the time our parents have high-ranking jobs that keep them away from the farm, maybe for two, three, four years or the entire year they hardly, they hardly ever go to the farm because of work, because of, uh, of, of, of uh, work commitments. Decision-making, really, most of the time, you do not have the power to make a decision then and there. Then and there, you have to most of the time before you make a decision, you be, before you make a decision on the farm, you have to pick up the phone and call your mom or call your dad for them to give you the go ahead. You do not have those powers. Your father or your mother holds all those powers, and when profits are being made from that farm, most of the time they don't even share with you. You don't even have a percentage on that farm. God forbid they sell this farm. They sell this farm where you have been uh, breaking your back for a good two or three years on that farm. Would they even share profits with you? Most of the time, it would be your father sells the farm, he takes the money he gets, he shares it with your mom, and that's all. You don't get a piece of it because you'll be told they'll be told they'll sell you in the nicest form. Go buy your own farm, and this is why you see that, uh, and this is why I've always studied that a lot of uh, black agricultural enterprises don't really last that long. It's because of all these things. It's because of a of a situation sometimes of we as black parents, as senior black people. Uh, sometimes tend to exploit our children. But then again, we want our children to be the ones driving to the farms and driving to the villages when we are not around or when we are probably abroad or probably when we have work commitments. But when it comes to the decision-making and when it comes to profits of the farm, we don't want to share with our kids. We don't. We, 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 we don't even speak about money with them. We keep quiet, you know. But yet we want them to be the ones running them when we're always telling them, don't worry, you're going to inherit this. This is yours one day. And then, God forbid, you, 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 you as a parent have a change of heart and be like, let me sell this farm. I want to ask myself, I know for a fact that not a lot of us would be like, okay, son, you have been the one, or, or daughter, you've been the one who's been farming and helping me on this farm. Let us share this profits. 
And the craziest part that I've also seen is in most uh, black farming enterprises is that the per some of the people that do the least work or some of the people that are not even uh, physically involved in this business usually have usually usually give a better i mean usually give a better opinion of what should be done of what should be done for this farm than the person who is really being actively involved but then again you know it, you can look at it as a blessing in disguise because it makes it very uncomfortable for us as black young people we end up saying look fine let us go and go buy our own farms let us go and go build our own crawls and move more from our fathers and our father and mother's village because they don't really value us here but then on the end of the day now when your when your parents do succumb to old age and pass on do you start hearing situations like if you are unsuccessful to obtain a farm and probably your father left you this farm the love and the passion for agriculture is gone you're not interested the first thing some of the first thing some of us do is either we go and we go sell off everything or we keep it there but we don't really actively farm we just have it there for the sake of having it and then the farm starts being run into the ground and this is because of all the years of probably not being listened to probably not uh, your your opinion or probably your ideas not being taken to heart or taken to head or even being considered just being vetoed and being shot down so those are part of the reasons that i see why a lot of uh, black agricultural enterprises fail and why a lot of white white agricultural enterprises actually survive because as i said they share the work they don't just share the work they say they share the decisions and also they share the, the profits that are made from the farm but most of the time with us as black people it's not that case we as a young person if your father sells for example one of his best bulls or if, if he's if he's a stud breeder sells one of his best bulls and makes a million dollars from that bull you i don't even think you will see uh, some of that cash you will always be given an excuse, probably tell you reinvested it or, you know, or not even tell you anything. You just keep quiet. You just know your father sold the bull for a million dollars, but you don't know exactly what those money was being, well, what that money was used for or in what way did it come back to you. But sometimes with most, I'm not trying to say that all white farmers are perfect, but sometimes with most, some white farmers, they sit down and say, okay, son, we sold this bull for a million dollars. You assisted me in breeding and raising the son. You have been there every, I mean, raising this bull uh, son or daughter you've been there every step of the way so i am inclined to share whether it's a third or a fourth whether it's a third of this of this of of of, of, of this um check that i'm getting i'm inclined to share with you because you assisted me and by doing that you are actually making sure that your agricultural enterprise whether it's livestock whether it is horticulture does survive in the next 10 to 20 years because here you are sharing with your son, you are making him, your, your son or daughter, sorry, let me not be sexist, you are sharing with your child, and you are making him or her feel as if they are part in whatever they say and whatever they do does contribute to the success of this business. And that's the way, like like on the end of the day, I think it comes down to the, um, is it Mindslow? My, 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 Mindslow's uh, hierarchy, hierarchy, hierarchy theory, the part of a human being being made to feel like he, he is contributing and being made to feel like he is doing something important in life. Something fulfilling in life, sorry. Doing something fulfilling. That's how you have to go about it. And I think if we as black people want to start building agricultural dynasties like most of our white counterparts, we have to change our mindset in how we go about managing managing them. How about we go about decision-making and how about, we, how about how we share profits with our offsprings. So those are my two cents, guys. Uh, I'd love to read your comments. I'm always looking forward to comments, and I'll respond to the comments. Thank you. And for those who have liked and subscribed my page, uh, thank you very much for supporting. I, I enjoy the support, and I'll really try to make more uh, videos and add more content to it.